Hello everyone and welcome back. I had a few requests on a Bay House update video and today I'm home alone so I thought it would be a good day to show you guys some of the things that you may not have seen. First off we're going to start here in the garage. On this side which is the door side we had two shelves that were in here. I removed these shelves so that I could hang up all my rakes and shovels and also in preparations for the winter, I wanted to be able to park two vehicles in here because it's really convenient to park in the garage in the winter time because you never have to scrape off your vehicle and if you heat your garage, you never have to pre-start your vehicle either. And we'll get into that in just a minute, but I kept this shelf up top. It has green treated plywood and I believe this shelf was put in probably around when they built the garage in 1978. So if we take a look at this shelf, I'll show you the other side so you can see the difference. And this right here is how the other two shelves were on that side. So they're, they were made with OSB and the two buys were um, not on edge. And they're still really good shelves. I liked having all the storage, but I really wanted to be able to park two vehicles in here. And it felt really kind of cramped in here. So this right here is my current heat setup. This is a Chinese diesel heater and it works just like any sort of uh, furnace that would heat your house. So it has a cold air intake from outside, it burns it in its combustion chamber, exhausts it outside, and then it has a secondary fan that draws air in from the garage, heats it up and blows it back out. So there's no carbon monoxide, there's no harmful fumes, and it's relatively fuel efficient. I rigged it up with this six gallon can and it burns through about five gallons, five to six gallons a week running it at uh, the low setting of 1.7 to about 2.5. I kind of play with it a little bit and then I'll come out here and turn it up nice and high to burn it out every once in a while. But it has been working non-stop for over a month now. and. On the lowest setting, it's heating the garage up to about 57 to 60 degrees, which is perfect. And we, we've been dipping down to the single digits at night, and it's just been working awesome. So I gotta go through the insulation, through one inch foam, through built right and then through the siding. Oh, brackets. With the removal of these two shelves, we can get the car and the van in the garage whenever we're home. And like I said, the garage stays at a consistent temperature of right around 60 degrees. What that means is we never have to pre-start our vehicles when we go anywhere and that's saving us fuel. So I did the differences in gas mileage for the car and the van. I did all the math, converted it to dollars and divided it by what it costs per gallon and the amount of money that we save, we go through about two tanks of gas or 24 gallons worth of gas a week. The amount of money that we save by not having to start these things pays for about three out of the five to six gallons that the heater burns through in a week which is awesome so you could kind of think of it that way you're gonna be saving money here but spending it there but it's the same money the only difference is for about 15 bucks a week then I can heat this whole space come out here whenever I want my tools are warm I can be out here in a sweatshirt or a t-shirt and it's comfortable and it's it's very nice I, I truly enjoy heating this space so when I removed the shelves to the left hand side here a lot of the stuff had to go over to the right hand side and they all got packed up on all these shelves which we have just enough space for all of it which is pretty nice the canoe that was up top got displayed above the workbench and I absolutely love it up there you guys know my grandpa made that canoe by hand. It's made out of Kevlar and it's a beautiful piece of art that I really don't know if I'll ever actually use in the water, but I absolutely love looking at it. 
Lastly, what I'd like to say is over here on these shelves, they're pretty packed, but a lot of what you see on here actually has to go inside. See, our last house having five bedrooms, we had a couple extra bedrooms to put all these boxes and totes into. And in this house, we don't quite have that luxury. So what we have been doing is we've been going through our boxes, picking what we need, what we don't need, transferring them to totes, because totes will stack a lot better, and then uh, slowly kind of organizing them in a way where it works downstairs in the uh, laundry room, storage room area. So a lot of what you see here actually has to go inside, but I'm waiting for a sale on totes because the really cheap ones, like that gray one that's kind of down here, uh, those are 10 bucks. And I remember when those were like, I think they went on sale for a dollar at Walmart or maybe it was $3, but they used to be super cheap. So I'm waiting for some kind of crazy sale on totes so I can buy about 20 of them. And then all of this stuff will get reorganized and uh, put where it needs to be. Well, Kev, should we go inside? Well, we've got lots of snow. Today is actually a nice warm day. Picked up a free snowblower and it runs beautifully. I have the recoil in the garage. Just been redoing that. But uh, definitely, we got a 24 inches of snow in about three days worth of time. So that was quite exciting. And still here is the question. Is it there? Oh, it is. It is here. All right. Looks like we got ourselves a free snowblower. Let's lo load it up and bring it home and see what it's all about, huh? It has fuel. But you know, it smells like it smells like last season's fuel. It doesn't smell terribly gross or old. Maybe they put fresh fuel in it. Do we try to start it? You guys want to just plug into it and see if it starts? Oh, the primer's working. The gas is pouring out. Let's see if she starts. I found why it's not turning. Oh no, my baby. Oh wow, she's really in there. Oh. We got a nice chisel, AKA a big pry. So yeah. Oh, that was like my baby, I love that thing. The, I can see the tension on this thing too. Okay, so I mean, a little beat up on the bottom, I and mean, this thing had seen decent time anyways, but let's see, is it bent? Oh no, she's good. There you go, there's a testament to Ryobi. 
Got sucked into a snowblower and survived. <laughs> I'll show you here that we uh, painted some of the front of the house, but we ran out of time in the fall. It just got too cold too quick. Um, since then, Sam and I have decided that rather than replacing pieces that need it, which most of the house needs to be replaced, rather than going about it that way, we're just going to rewrap the house in vinyl next year. It's actually not that expensive. Probably about three to four thousand dollars for the vinyl siding and the soffit and everything that goes with that. But, uh, yeah, we just decided it's probably not worth much time to try to put lipstick on it. This is what the front of the house looks like. So we painted it this dark blue color, which is really pretty. Welcome back inside the bay house. So here in the kitchen, I replaced both of these windows. I know I filmed them. I'm just not sure if I put them in a video yet. Feeling better today, big girl? Yeah. Hey, is this my helmet? It is your helmet. Good job. I got both of these replaced, and you can see the one that's above the sink is shifted to the left. I did that in preparation for the, the cabinets because I knew that we were going to be shifting the sink to the left so we can get the dishwasher on the right, but the window I bought is too big. So we have to downsize that window a little bit and readjust it once we get the cabinets in here. This window here we also made a little bit smaller just because the sizes that were in here were from, I think, I think they're original to the house and they just don't make uh, windows the same size without special ordering. So this one here though, we got that replaced and that is so much better. That one there was very foggy and you could barely see out of it. So now we're looking into the mudroom and inside the mudroom we replaced this window. If you remember the other one was like a casement I believe is what they're called where they kind of swing out on the bottom and it had a big crack in it. So we got that replaced which is nice. And in the process I noticed that behind the paneling that actually is sheetrock. So we are going to be ripping off the paneling, mudding and taping and everything and it will really refresh this room because both Sam and I are not fans of paneling. In the closet here, it had two shelves up way up high, and then the bar for hanging your coats. And I just did a little bit of a refresh here. I painted it white, and we put up these more simple uh, coat hangers, which is what we had at the last house, and it's really convenient. I still have to make a bench down below so you can sit and put on your shoes. But this, I think, really helped this space out. So this window here is the type that was in that mud room. So it cranks out on the bottom. But the one in the mud room was really cracked. And actually the one in Rose's room is cracked. And this one's really foggy. So we've actually decided we're going to be removing the one in Rose's room and our room because it gets in the way of the bed. And we just think if we remove this window, we can center up the bed a little bit better and have more usable space inside of these small bedrooms. I believe these bedrooms are only 10 by 10, so any way you can lay it out better would really help. Also, with these closets, originally they would have had like a piece of plywood, two of them, and you'd slide and slide so you'd have like, you know, 50-50. Well, 
that's really I think that really dates the house but what I have to do is I have to frame in about 10 11 inches on the top here so that I can put in just regular bifold closet doors so that's been on the uh, waiting list also because it's uh, an inside project and so now this winter I can start kind of working my way through all these so this here is Rosie's room and as you can see we have hers kind of covered up but that window has a crack in it too. Uh, right now we have this, it's a window cover but it didn't quite fit so we taped it up. And uh, all that is, is in the summertime when she goes to bed at like 7 it's so light in here that we needed to try to get as much light out as possible so we covered it up to kind of darken it but her window will be going also and that way she'll have one window in here and then uh, you can have a bed with the headboard and no big deal but um, yeah and then her closet also needs the same we requested that they paint her room pink but they must have also took it as paint the closet pink but typically closets are white but her closet needs to be redone as well you might remember when we had that nasty bay window in here. I was sure happy to rip that thing out. But what we've done now is we actually got trim going all the way around these and it sure made this room look so nice. Put this white trim on there, but I had to get some extra wide. This is six inch trim five and a half technically it's hard to see because of the way the light is coming in here but the reason I had to do that is the sheetrock ends like right here and like right here on the sides because that old window was bigger it fit in a bigger space than these two windows so put that extra wide trim on there it I don't think it looks bad at all I think it actually kind of frames the window and the beautiful scenery outside and uh, I think it looks quite quite nice but even though the space for the windows is smaller the amount of glass that we have to see through on these windows it, it was like I don't know like three or five inches more glass compared to the bay window so we actually have more um, glass to see through going this way and just to show you this is what it looks like outside so we got her kind of framed up but like I said next year or maybe the year after we're actually gonna be uh, redoing all this siding it wasn't as salvageable as I thought it was but I think we did a pretty good job working with what we had so the previous lady that owned this house she had a her water main busted the day she signed the papers this deck used to wrap all the way around to the other side, but when the water main busted, they had to cut it and remove it so that they could dig down to get to the pipe, and then they just never reconnected it. So that's on our list of things to do next year is to get it all connected so we have a wraparound deck. And then once we do that, we're gonna actually remove this door because the only reason why we use this door is just to let the dogs in and out and doors are just really inefficient for heating and the lake is that way so all the wind is hitting the front of the house I've made it as tight as I possibly can but you know still it's just doors are cold so that'll help there and then also it helps because we can shift all of our furniture down the three feet and we can gain a little bit more space in here or if we wanted to we could put a bookshelf there or whatever but we just kind of we're looking at the one day and it's really not needed um, if we wanted to we could rip out these new windows and put a sliding glass door in there um, which would be the other option but we both agreed it's nice but just that like doors in general like our sliding glass windows at our last house and the French door at the house before that uh, they're just really inefficient in the winter time and they get cold so there's kind of a delicate balance there that a person needs to play. So as far as the basement goes, I haven't done too much more. I did paint these stairs and then at Menards you buy this runner by the foot and I put this runner in here and it looks really pretty.
and uh, it, it, I think it really looks nice. I still have to sheetrock the walls and things like that, but we're actually considering doing something else with these stairs. But I don't want to say too much about it yet because it's uh, quite the project. Otherwise, in the basement here, not too much has really been happening. Um, the flooring's doing quite well so far. And I did have a few people concerned about moisture issues within this closet here. And so far, I haven't had any issues at all. But the sump pump hasn't kicked on since I uh, installed all this. So it hasn't been very, very wet. Um, what I do plan on doing though is putting in like a vent here and then a vent out here so that it can breathe a little bit more. I mean naturally I think it breathes through the door. The door isn't the tightest door ever but um, you know I do want it to be able to breathe and I'll probably put a vent in the bottom of this also so it can breathe a little bit better. I also seen a few comments coming through on the old guitar playing videos that I had. Um, <laughs> so this here is the, I just picked this up. It's obviously used, but I had a Line 6 Spider amp just like this a long time ago. And then it blew up and I um, bought that half stack. Uh, but I seen this at the guitar shop and I couldn't pass it up. So I bought it and uh, you know, maybe I'll turn it on. And then this here. I made a trade deal. This is a in the last house, and it's a Kramer American with the Floyd Rose. And uh, this guitar sounds really awesome. So. <laughs> So that's about all I got on the Bay House. Uh, the weather got cold quick and deer hunting came in and other than the tent deer hunting I went hunting around here a little bit too. So I was just busy with that. I did record some of it. I'll throw some of it in here if you guys would like to see some of that. So if you tried to get a four wheeler through here it would probably be a pretty hard time. Maybe a person could, but you certainly wouldn't want to get stuck. Right here is one of these, maybe it's a 2x10 or a 2x12. Waiting for Christmas at this point and watching the prices go up and down. They they haven't came all the way back down yet, but I mean it's for trimming stuff it's quite expensive. For me just to trim out this window, it was um, 200 bucks and I have one stick left over, so that'll save me 15 or 20 bucks there. So about 180 dollars worth of materials just to get that done and. And so, you know, I'm just waiting for the prices to come down a little bit, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get back into it, I'm sure. It's just the lull of the year. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in another video. I filmed this video yesterday, but this morning when I woke up, I realized it's 12 below zero outside, so I wanted to show you what temperature that heater is maintaining out in the garage. So at its lowest setting, it's at 42 degrees in that garage, which means it's maintaining, uh, what is that, about 55 degree difference, which is a lot. And you can see that the door is all frosted up. Last night I went to the store and we were getting a little bit of snow. I think we maybe got an inch or two of snow last night. And so when I came back, the 
car was dripping with uh, all the snow melting off. And now with the humidity in there, the garage door is all frozen. <laughs>